In this video, I'll show you how to use the Nakama Blueprints SDK to interact with your Nakama server using Unreal's Blueprint system. We'll use Blueprints to authenticate our player, connect a real-time client, and update our player's online status, as well as use a custom RPC function to receive a random reward item from a loot chest. I'll also demonstrate how you can use Nakama's leaderboard functionality to create competitive elements in your game, such as a timed obstacle course. While this video focuses only on a small subsection of the functionality within the Nakama Blueprints API, it does support our full range of Nakama features, including real-time matchmaking, parties, matches, chat, storage engine, and more. For a comprehensive example, please visit github.com forward slash heroic labs forward slash Nakama hyphen unreal, where you can find the full Nakama Blueprints demo project. Before we take a look at the sample project for this video, I want to quickly run through the steps you'll need to take to install the Nakama Unreal SDK into your projects. To begin, download the SDK from the GitHub repository by going to github.com slash heroic labs slash Nakama hyphen unreal slash releases, and download the source code for the latest release. Once downloaded, extract it and copy the Nakama folder which you'll find inside to your Unreal Projects Plugins folder. If a plugins folder doesn't already exist, create one and then copy the Nakama folder into it as normal. An alternative method is to install the Nakama plugin globally for all Unreal projects by extracting it into your Unreal Marketplace plugins folder on your machine. The location for this varies depending on your operating system and where you installed the Unreal Engine, so please consult the Unreal documentation to find out where this would be on your machine. With the plugin installed, Opening your project for the first time will prompt you to rebuild the Nakama plugin. Hit yes and wait for the project to load. Once your project is loaded, click edit in the menu bar and choose plugins. Search for Nakama and you should see the Nakama client plugin listed. Check the checkbox and restart Unreal to enable the Nakama plugin. Now that I've shown you how to install the Nakama Unreal plugin in your own projects, it's time for me to show you the sample project that we've set up for this demo. In this demo, we'll control a third-person character that has the ability to open chests to receive a random reward, powered by a custom RPC function running in our Nakama server. We'll achieve this by first authenticating with our Nakama server, then calling our custom RPC function on the server, decoding the response, and using that to generate the appropriate item and visuals on the client. We'll also briefly look at what's involved in setting up a real-time client connection and updating our player's online status using it. The real-time client is the gateway to accessing more advanced Nakama functionality, such as matchmaking and parties, all of which are covered in the more comprehensive Nakama Blueprints demo project found in the GitHub repository. As well as all of this, we'll use Nakama's leaderboard functionality to power a timed obstacle course in our game. Players will compete in a global leaderboard to see who can finish the course in the fastest time. The first thing to look at is the custom BP Player Controller Blueprint class. This blueprint inherits from the default player controller class and in it we can run all of the code necessary to begin interacting with Nakama when our player enters the game. Inside the event graph, we begin by using the create default client node. This node takes our Nakama server server key, host address, port, and a few other configuration settings and then spits out a Nakama client object which we can use to interact with our Nakama instance. Once we have our client object, we'll promote it to a variable to be used later. From there, we use the authenticate device node, passing in a reference to our client object, as well as a string for the device ID. For the purposes of this demo, we're using a random GUID here instead of the device's unique identifier. We're also checking the create account option, which specifies that if there isn't already an Akama user account for this device ID, we'd like to go ahead and create a new one. As you can see from the small clock icon at the top right of this node, this tells us that it's an asynchronous or latent action. As such, we can see it has three execution pins. The top pin will execute straight after the authenticate device action has been called. Any nodes that run in this way may execute before the authenticate device request is completed, so it's generally not a good idea to use this pin to execute anything that would require the resulting session object. Instead, you can see that there's both an on success and an on error execution pin. Both of these will execute when the authenticate request has completed, either successfully or with a resulting error. You'll see this pattern used a lot in the Nakama nodes, so it's always worth remembering that where possible, you should use the on success execution pin rather than the default execution pin when you're relying on the resulting object. I should also mention that while the on error execution pin isn't being used in all cases in this demo, 
You should always handle errors in your own project by making use of this pin. I'll demonstrate this in our RPC example later on. Once we've authenticated the user, we use the get user account node, passing in both the client and session objects to retrieve the user's account information from Nakama. We store this in a variable and then break the resulting Nakama account structure so that we can access the user's data. From there, we break the user data structure and grab the username, passing it into an append node so that we can display a debug message showing the user's username on screen. With our user authenticated, we can now create a real-time client. The real-time client differs from the standard client object we've been using so far in that it uses a live socket connection to communicate with Nakama. This real-time client connection facilitates the use of things such as matchmaking, matches, and parties, as well as giving us the ability to update our user's online status, which we'll do here. To create the real-time client, we use the setup real-time client node and pass it our client and session objects. We'll check the box that says show as online and leave the other options as default. We'll then store the resulting real-time client object in a variable and proceed to call the connect node, passing in our real-time client object. As we've seen before, the connect node is an asynchronous action, and so we get the three execution pins just like we did when we authenticated. For this demo, we're going to make use of both the default execution pin and the on success execution pin. Let's first take a look at our on success pin. You can see that once our connect action succeeds, we call the update status node, once again passing in our real time client object, as well as a string that we'll use to set the user's new online status message. We'll then print out a message from the on success pin of this node that tells us that our status was updated. We needed to execute this logic after our connect was successful as it relies on a connected real-time client to work, but there may be situations where you don't care or need an asynchronous action to have completed in order to be able to continue. In these circumstances, you can continue from the default execution pin, just like we have above. From the default execution pin of our connect node, we continue to set up all of the reward chests in our level. Without diving too much into the specifics of how the chests are configured for user interaction, you can see that we get an array of all chest actors in our level and then bind to their open chest event. Here's where we'll perform the logic of calling out to Nakama to find out which item to reward our player with. From the onopen reward chest event, you can see that we first tell the chest to start its opening animation. We then use the RPC node to call a custom server runtime RPC on the Nakama server called open chest. This RPC returns a randomly generated integer between 0 and 2 that determines which item the player will receive from the chest. When the RPC is successful, we break open the RPC response structure and then use the load JSON from string node to pass the return JSON payload from the server. From the JSON object, we grab the item ID field and pass this value to the open function on the chest itself. This function uses the item ID value to determine which item will be given from the chest. It's worth noting here that the JSON nodes are not part of the Nakama Blueprint API, but are instead part of the JSON Blueprint Utilities plugin, which you can find by going back to the Edit Plugins menu and enabling it. Coming back to our RPC call, should it fail for any reason, we follow the onError execution pin and print the error by breaking apart the Nakama error structure and displaying it on the screen. We then call the stop opening function. If we launch the game now, we can see that our character can walk up to each chest, interact with it, and receive a random item. We can also take a look at our Nakama server logs to see the RPC requests being made by our authenticated user and responded to accordingly. Now that we've seen how interacting with an RPC works, let's take a look at how we can submit and read leaderboard scores using Blueprints. For this example, I've set up an obstacle course for our player to navigate with the goal being to reach the end in the fastest time possible. The timer kicks off as soon as the player walks through the start gate and ends when the player steps through the end gate. Let's quickly take a look at the obstacle course in action. As you saw, when the player reaches the end, a leaderboard record is submitted to Nakama and then the top three leaderboard records for the obstacle course are displayed on the screen. To see how this works, we need to dive into the level blueprint, which is where the obstacle course logic lives. We'll skip over the logic that controls the obstacle course, but the important bit here is that once the player has passed through the end gate, we grab a reference to the player controller and then call the write leaderboard record action, passing in the client and session object from the player controller. 
We specify the leaderboard ID as course times and set the score to the time it took the player to complete the course, multiplied by 1000 to give it a time in milliseconds. We do this as the leaderboard score needs to be a whole integer, so in order to have more precise leaderboard records, we convert the time from seconds to milliseconds. Once the leaderboard record has been sent to Nakama, we then use the list leaderboard records node to grab the top three records for the obstacle course by setting the appropriate leaderboard ID value and a limit value of three. We then iterate over the records and print them to the screen. As mentioned earlier, this demo only showcases a small fraction of the functionality available in the Nakama Blueprints API, but hopefully demonstrates how quick and easy it is to get up and running with Nakama in Unreal using this new Blueprints plugin. For a full list of available Blueprint nodes, simply go back to any Blueprint event graph, right click and then look for the Nakama section. You'll see that it covers the whole spectrum of Nakama features, from authentication to real-time matches, chat, storage and more. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please remember to hit that subscribe button and click on the notification bell to be notified whenever we release new tutorial content just like this one. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.